there. Welcome to Bruz International, the English speaking show here on Bruz. Thanks so much for joining us for this latest edition, which starts in Scarbeck. We're off to Barbater. Le Barbeter is the name of my beer bar and beer shop. It refers to what we call in English airlock, and that's um, a little piece of uh, machinery that we use in the fermentation um, in beers and also in, uh, in wine and other types of fermentation. I arrived here like 11 years ago. There was not really much going on in the neighborhood. And I always wanted to have a friendly bar with quality beers in the neighborhood. And so I just thought to myself, okay, why not open it here? We have European and Belgian craft beers. The small independent breweries that brew uh, quality products with uh, quality raw materials and um, also kind of uh, modern style beers. So it's 20 beers on tap, uh, rotating. So it changes uh, every week, every day. Actually, never the same. And uh, it ranges from 300 to 400 beers available by the bottle in the shop, uh, and 100 uh, bottles, cans available to drink in. Next, in this report, we're telling you all about the Brussels Shakespeare Society, which, as you can imagine, is full of theatre lovers. Though this island seemed to be desert, <laughs> <laughs> uninhabitable and almost inaccessible. Yet. So I think the play is very much about um, forgiveness and redemption, and what makes us human, and the good and the bad. Uh, this craving for power and for controlling people and then um, the redemption of trying to accept people the way they are and atonement and forgiveness. So I think those things have always been there in Shakespeare. Creation, uh, power, forgiveness, old and new. I try to bring those themes into what we're living now uh, because I think everywhere history repeats itself. And I bring the issue of the generational gap, and this is very much present, for example, with climate change, and how the new generation looks at what the old generation has done and to the, to the planet. One of the remarkable things about The Tempest is that it touches on so many themes that are of absolutely vital import to us now. Prospero's use of science, uh, his, his use of powers beyond the normal human grasp. Are we using those powers wisely or not? And I would say that there is no more pertinent question to ask right now. I think uh, it takes a bit part. I mean, I have lots of work. Um, so this becomes like a second job so I have a double life, but it's also a way of keeping sanity. I work on migration and uh, it's very toxic environment and a bit toxic discussions. So actually doing the theatre helps me to disconnect completely and, and try to bring things that I cannot do through work and trying to pass a, mo a more emotional message that I cannot do through work. Show the adjacentness! and instruct me how to snare the nimble marmosets. So in the production, I am uh, a character by the name of Caliban, which may be a surprise to some. It's traditionally a male role, <laughs> which may shock some other people, dismay some, but I'm okay with that. It's a different angle when you're using a woman in that place, because you still look at it that way, but the dimensions, the, everything shifts. The whole thought. Everybody who gets involved does so because they have an extraordinary love for theatre. Uh, it, it, to me, it's very important. People sort of think it's an extra, but it's not. Uh, theatre is about telling stories, and humans love stories, and that's what we do. Well, I don't know how many countries, but I know that we have people from all continents except Oceania. So I have people from India, 
uh, from Zimbabwe, uh, from, she, from the United States, uh, from Britain, from Spain, from Mexico. So it's a very diverse cast. I love <laughs> this production. This production has taken me on a very interesting journey where I've had to look at myself many times. There has been a lot of introspection for myself within this production, and I am grateful. It has been an interesting journey for me. He must obey his artist of such power. Come from my ward for, uh, I can hear his arm if you look at the fact that for the last 200 years we've been overexploiting the natural resources of this planet and the new generations are trying to change those things, I think is very important. But we will not manage to do it unless we forgive each other. When you look, for example, the European Union, we needed Second World War to come together. And it was a huge impact in our lives and in who we are as Europeans. If we had not forgiven each other, we will not be here today. We will continue fighting. So there is a moment when we have to say enough is enough. I'm just going to stop trying to dominate everything. I'm just going to for accept the other and I'm going to forgive the others. And I hope the others will also forgive me because otherwise there is no future. We have to stop this circle of violence. If thou dost break her virgin not before so our I discord and disdain, Next, in this report, we catch up with a Romanian-Portuguese couple who are based here in Brussels. And instead of going to the beach for their Easter holidays, they decided to drive from Brussels to the Balkans in their beloved old Hugo car. <coughs> Tell me about yourselves first. Uh, well, we are old-timer lover, old lovers and we have this also new passion for Yugoslavia, quite new after visiting the country a few times. Uh, and with that passion came this uh, Yugo. We decided that it would be great to go, to go back to the, to the Western Balkans on it, and uh, we started this adventure. We actually want to highlight the um, creativity of the region with our road trip, because while we were restoring the car, we listened to Yugoslav rock. So rock from Yugoslavia and rock from modern former Yugoslav space. And we thought, if we're going to do a road trip in the region, why not put this on the map again as it should be? The car, the Yugo, has been named on, on the internet on the, on the forum as the worst car ever. We assure that it's not true at all. And we are going to prove it by going back, doing this uh, road trip of 4,000 kilometers. We hope to come back uh, in one piece. What's it like to embark on a unique holiday like this? The idea is to stop in these cities and meet the people who are Yugo fans. I think it's, it's fantastic because it does so many things at once. We're not going to be away for that long, it's just more or less a week. But it's, all, it's exploring a space that we are very attached to with a rich culture. We're going to pass by Sarajevo. Uh, that is the highlight of our trip. In Sarajevo the, there will be a former Yugoslav rock centre. Uh, to be opened and we are very much supporting this project. We are so happy. I think it's, it's better than your usual holiday at the beach. Hugo is such an easy car to drive. It's, it's um, particularly well suited for Brussels and it doesn't actually guzzle that much gas. And just where um, our viewers can find you if they're curious about following your trip? Uh, our story is on Instagram in, on uh, Red Horizons. The Red Horizons is Z at the end. Finally, in this report, we're meeting Tom McGuire, an American singer from New York who lives now in Brussels. Say my name softly in my ear. I came here originally in 1981 for the first time in Brussels. I was working in advertising. I grew up in the Bronx during the 50s, 60s. I went to high school. University in the Bronx also. In, my ear. in the early 70s, I was working on Madison Avenue uh, in advertising. There was a lot of growth in advertising, the industry, outside of the United States. And they sent me to Brussels. I moved around Europe a bit. I was transferred to Paris and London and 
but came back to Brussels. Brussels is my adopted hometown. It's a big city. It has all the benefits of a big city. Cultural opportunities, vibrant. And Brussels, for me, is like a language lab. I guess about 15 years ago, I, uh, through La Monet Opera House here in Brussels, I found a private teacher. I started doing that basically as a hobby, but it was growing more and more. My passion for it, the enjoyment. I went to New York to the Juilliard Conservatory. I auditioned. I was accepted for an extension semester there. That got me to a, a level that was, you know, really enjoyable for me. Came back to Brussels. I was invited to join an opera company here in Brussels, a Vlaams Talik opera company called Brussels Operette Theatre. And uh, one thing led to another. I started going to jams at the Music Village, a jazz club here in Brussels. So I was really lucky to meet guys like Mathieu, Ramon, and leaving, and we put together a band called the New Yorkers. Once I really get into the music, and I always look at the sheet music, I always figure out the melodies on the keyboard. Um, yeah, this is this is stuff that uh, you know. It's just to learn it and sing it and bring it to a live audience. That's. That's a great feeling. Being on stage, performing for a live audience, I absolutely love it. Being here home alone, practicing, I absolutely love it. Well, that's it for this edition of Bras International. Take care and see you really soon, hopefully.